sustainability. It's all about people coexisting with our planet's environment. It's about using resources wisely and productively. It's about breakthrough technologies that help create a cleaner, greener future while satisfying the aspirations of a burgeoning human population. Join me in exploring companies that help make America a sustainable nation. Have you ever wondered how these beans get into this can and taste so good? I can't tell you how many family dinners I've had enjoying Bush's beans. And today we're gonna learn all about these beans, how they get into this can, and how it's good for the environment. My name is John McCalmont. We're in Chestnut Hill, Tennessee, and this is Built in America, Sustainable Nation. An ambitious man called A.J. Bush started out as a teacher in a small Tennessee town in the 1890s, but he felt the need to build a business that his children could benefit from. In 1896, A.J. opened a general store. Then in 1904, he added a tomato cannery, which quickly grew into a lucrative business. Tomatoes needed to be processed quickly after picking, so they were grown in local fields. The cans were filled and sealed by hand and shipped by mule-drawn wagons. Well, you're in the starting point place. Really? Yeah, this, we really this is, are. This is where so, it started. My great-grandfather, uh, this was his first business endeavor, uh, was the general store here in the community of Chestnut Hill, Tennessee. He had uh, gone away to school and become a, a school teacher and came back to the community to teach school and wanted to start his own business, and this is where it all began. Over the next couple of decades, the business had its ups and downs along with the country's booms and busts. But it was World War II that caused a sea change in this little town. The business just kind of took off uh, gradually. They increased um, the, the types of products that they were canning, uh, different vegetables and fruits and so forth that could be sourced locally in the area. And that took place until the 40s, uh, when actually the Tennessee Valley Authority came in uh, during World War II and to provide electricity for the war effort, uh, the work that was being done over in Oak Ridge and so forth, not far from here. And actually, that's when all of our farmland was flooded uh, during the building of Douglas Dam. All of that hard work drowned and lost forever. Down but not far from out, the intrepid Bush family rallied and even expanded the business, buying canneries around the country, focusing primarily on beans. And now you source beans from all over the United States, don't you? We do, we do. Primarily from the upper Midwest. You think about Michigan and, and the Dakotas and, and Minnesota where we get a lot of our dry beans, but we also uh, source a lot of our beans from places like Nebraska and California and so forth, depending on the variety. So um, we've got a, a pretty broad uh, uh, growing area and we work with a lot of farmers across the country. A great partnership was forged in the 60s between Chippewa Valley Bee and Bush Beans in Augusta, Wisconsin. My father started growing kidney beans in 1969, and Chippewa Valley Bean wasn't even thought of yet. Actually, he brought his beans here to the plant in Augusta. He became good friends with Condon Bush. And growing up at the time, Condon used to travel to our farm, and he had a beautiful Corvette and he and my father would go out and they would look at fields and they would count beans in the pod and they would say this is going to be a great crop but really Bush Brothers was instrumental in the reason why Chippewa Valley Bean exists. Uh, the family bought this property in 1962 uh, it was a closed facility. They were wanting to expand the green bean business and also introduce Southern Peas to this area. Um, it took about a year to get it going. It was in pretty bad shape. I think um, a uh, pigeon roost is what Condon called it at one time, but they, they got the plant working it, uh, and I believe it was February of the next year, they had the grand opening. There was a lot of concern that this uh, plant was gonna have to be closed. Uh, Condon Bush, who's my third generation cousin, he had come over to be general manager uh, when the plant was purchased in the early 60s. He came up with the idea to make the baked bean and it was 
a, a recipe that was inspired by his mother. And he and a group of folks here in Augusta spent countless hours um, trying to recreate this recipe that his mother had made when they were growing up. And so they had a huge aluminum pot and a big canoe paddle. And they would just, by trial and error, take uh, basically the pork and bean recipe, take out the tomato paste, and then begin to add ingredients. And they finally came up with the right mix of ingredients, and the original baked bean was born. And as he would say, uh, that first year they sold about 10,000 cases, and the second year they got out and they sold 100,000 cases. And the next year it was approaching a million. So it really took off uh, in a very short period of time and allowed us to really embrace the growth of this product and really seize an opportunity for our company that has uh, propelled us into you know, where we are today. Built in America Innovation Nation is proud to honor Microsoft for all the great work they are doing for businesses and within communities across our nation and around the world. Built in America Innovation Nation is taking an in-depth look at Titletown Tech. Well, I think this uh, is an, an opportunity to bring two world-class organizations together that have great complementary strengths, but a common commitment to the community and help bring Titletown to a new dimension that adds this creative element and helps add to the role that we'll play as really a crown jewel and engine of economic growth for all of Northeastern Wisconsin and for us at Microsoft. It's incredibly exciting to be a part of it. In the same year that the NFL celebrated their 100th anniversary, the Green Bay Packers launched this great initiative with the creation of Titletown Tech by partnering with Microsoft and other great American companies to support new innovation that is being developed and created in America. Built in America, Innovation Nation would like to honor the Green Bay Packers and Microsoft for their amazing work with Titletown and the creation of Titletown Tech. Al, why build a company around such a small bean? Well, we think beans are a superfood. Um, they're high in fiber, they're high in protein, no cholesterol, no fat. The average American probably gets half the fiber they need. Um, they also lock nitrogen into the soil, so from an environmental standpoint, it takes less chemicals. You actually have to feed vegetable protein to animals to get the protein. So from a sustainability, if you're talking about feeding the world, um, you know, it's a great source of protein. Today, Bushes is the largest producer of prepared beans in the country. Its manufacturing facilities employ hundreds of people living in the rural communities of Augusta, Wisconsin, and Chestnut Hill, Tennessee. Many of them have worked here for generations. Bush Brothers is truly the lifeblood of these rural American communities. Bush Brothers is a very important uh, business in our community. Starting with the schools, they do help support uh, a lot of educational programs. Uh, for the last three years, they've been the main support structure for a uh, at-risk um, education program. And we've had a number of students that may not have made it through high school to graduate uh, without their support with that. Bushes has always been a part of my life, being in the south side of the county, Chestnut Hill. And so uh, I can't imagine life without Bushes because we grew up with uh, Bushes. Uh, family members worked at Bushes. Uh, people at church that we went to, they would work at Bushes, and, uh, and so Bushes is a large part of growing up in this area. My great-grandfather worked here for a period of years later in his work life. Both of my grandparents on my father's side retired from Bush. Both of my parents retired from Bush. Uh, and I've been blessed as far as my work history to work in almost every area of the plant. So I was curious about how bush beans are made. Seems like a simple thing. Just toss some cooked beans into a sauce into a can, right? Well, as I found out producing 55 million pounds of beans a year, 
is a lot more complicated than that. It all starts in these huge fields in North Dakota and Michigan, where so many beans are grown, I have no idea how many they are. Bean production is in the upper Midwest for the most part. Uh, North Dakota being the largest producing state. And then as you work your way toward the Great Lakes, we have Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan. And then as well, there's, there's product growing a little further to the west in Nebraska and Colorado and a bit in California. But the main production is the center states of North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan. The dried beans are brought to a Bush Brothers cannery, like this one in Chestnut Hill, Tennessee, where they are stored in a warehouse until ready for processing. So cans are a really good package for any type of food, but especially beans. We collect data on every single can size we have, flavor combination. The grilling beans that have vegetables in them, our bacon, all of those are different variables and we need to make sure that our process makes it safe across the board. We can't have one product be safe and assume that that same time and temperature will make another product safe. So the FDA takes our collaboration of data and reviews it and says, oh, we think that you have the right um, conditions to make a very safe product. You put the lid on and we seam it and we actually seam it twice. So that makes sure no microorganisms can get in, no air can get in, no light can get in. And those are really the three things that affect your product quality and safety. Pressure cooking cans, like your grandmothers might have done on the stove at home, is exactly the same principles as we use, except on a massive scale. So we have huge pressure cookers that are five stories tall, and not just your little pot that was on the stove, but they work exactly the same. And so if you remember eating vegetables canned by your grandparents, it's the same thing we do at Bush. We don't put in any extra preservatives, it is perfectly natural. You put in your beans, you put in your sauce, and then you just really heat treat it with pressure. Your grandmother wasn't putting in any extra preservatives to make those safe, and so that's what we do as well. The secret recipe for this beautiful bean company is the people. Bush's Beans secret family recipe. A lot of people have tried to get their hands on that. Let's see if it's open. Oh. They take that seriously, don't they? More built in America sustainable nations coming up. I'm gonna get out of here. I think I might be in trouble. Build in America, sustainable nation, would like to honor SC Johnson and their iconic brands for making a positive impact in America and around the world. As stewards of our planet, S.C. Johnson and Fisk Johnson have been working hard to protect our oceans from plastic waste. Yeah, I mean, as you can see around me on this beach, you know, the plastic waste accumulating here, I mean, it's, it's heartbreaking to see it. Um, literally 15 billion pounds of plastic get poured into the ocean every year. We are living in a world where there is more plastic being produced and thrown away. SC Johnson are champions of sustainability. They are showing consumer products and industries the way to sustainability. We at Sustainable Nation and Built in America would like to pay tribute to these great organizations and leaders who are helping us make the world a better place. Now, I know the environment is very important to you guys. Tell me some of the things that you're doing to be a sustainable corporation. Well, I think when you think about sustainability for us, 
it's a, it's a sustainable model in that the bean is very sustainable. So the can and the bean itself are very sustainable. Steel is infinitely recyclable. Okay, so 70% of all steel, I believe, gets recycled. About 37% of the steel that we use is, comes from recycled steel. So the can are very sustainable. So the environmental benefits of cans is that they are universally and unlimitedly recyclable. So you can have a can that has steel in it from your grandmother or your great-grandmother's time, and then your great-great-grandchildren could have cans with steel from a can that you ate out of. It is easy to melt them down, flatten out the steel, and make new cans. You're not introducing any new materials or energy, and it is really efficient. What we do to the environment, do for the environment, the water reuse facility here that we have at Chestnut Hill, we take the wastewater, uh, we clean that water, we reuse that water, uh, we actually use the, um, the gas coming off that water to, to fire our boilers, so things like that are very important to us. And like I said, sustainability has many, many models, one of which is providing jobs in the community. The Process Water Reuse Facility is basically a biological treatment plant to purify water. But in the design, we've accounted for uh, the reuse or the, the beneficial reuse of the byproducts of the treatment process. So when you think about the byproducts, we have uh, bean splits or waste beans, those get separated and fed to the cattle at the cattle facility. We have methane gas, which is a byproduct of the treatment process, which at this facility is returned to the, to the main plant and used as an alternative fuel to natural gas in the boiler system. We have a solid waste that comes out of the treatment process that we dry and put on the ground as fertilizer. And we take water that has been purified through this system and actually return water to the manufacturing plant and use it in utility applications of boilers and cooling towers. Currently, the, the amount of water that we return treated back to the manufacturing plant and reuse is about the consumption of 500 homes per day. With our Public Works Department, Bushes is, uh, is an extremely responsible partner. In uh, uh, a number of years ago, they put together a uh, methane digester. Uh, so all of the, uh, the wastewater that is produced at Bushes uh, is sent there. Uh, the methane is then pulled off. It's put back into making electricity for the plant, as well as sold back to the grid. What we have here in Augusta for um, our water and sewer department um, wouldn't probably be able to be had if it wasn't for the offset that uh, that Bushes has. So I guess you could describe uh, Bushes and that as um, a, a good steward to the environment. Whatever I do, I want to be responsible for the future. So I want my practices to leave the earth better than when I was on it. And that really matches up with Bush. So. The cans being unlimitedly recyclable are fantastic. Um, being able to use our bean and our bean waste products for good and to really give back to the communities and the earth. And so we use water to make our beans, but we reuse that water. When I hear sustainability, I think right now, which is something very different than I thought about before, the intersection of our impact in the environment uh, and our cans and our packaging, uh, also in beans, there's a great story there. But it's not just about what we make and how we make it, it's also about our people, the people that make it as well. So to think about when I'm talking to somebody and trying to entertain them and say, hey, consider Bush Brothers. It's not just for three years, it's not just for four years. We really want to hire somebody that wants to be here for the duration of their career. We don't make that decision for them, but we think about their families. We're hiring somebody's mother, somebody's father, somebody's niece, nephew, daughter. That's important to us as well. So as I think about the intersection of the people, 
that make our products and the footprint that we leave in our environment, that's what sustainability means. And that people portion of it is something that I've actually learned while I've been here at Bush Brothers. Several years ago, I heard Jim Ethier, who is family member and former chairman of the board and CEO, he said that if we want this company to last forever, we must all put more into it than we take from it. So that general approach, I think that's a good approach to sustainability. We want to be a company that lives forever. It's in our mission statement. Um, and also, um, our core values, our, our family values that have been passed down from my great-grandfather, responsibility, trust, integrity, and caring, those are all very important to us as well. And when it comes to sustainability, that really matches up with our core value of responsibility. We feel a responsibility to our communities uh, to take care of the, the folks that have um, given so much to us to make us successful. Uh, we certainly want to be good citizens in our community. And we're also blessed with resources, water, um, a beautiful scenery um, out in the Smoky Mountains, those kinds of things that we certainly want to take care of. And so. Um, that, that value of responsibility is what drives us to be what we feel like a very sustainable company. Now there are so many different Bush's Beans recipes and Bush's Beans cans and different things. How, how many products do you guys actually have? We have a little over 400 products, I believe. And you know, right, we have several different flavors. We're adding flavors uh, just about every year. We're adding new products. Of course, we stay true to the original baked bean and uh, some of those kind of products, but we're always trying something new to see uh, how, how, how can we delight the consumer. When I'm not developing recipes for the back of the can or for our social media, I'm actually developing recipes for our bean line. So day to day, I'm looking at trends and I'm looking at recipes that are out there and how that could fit into business. So what is my favorite bean and bean dish? That's really hard to answer because I have so many favorite beans. I mean, I love black beans. I love the different types of white beans like cannellini or navy bean. And I love heirloom beans, all these unusual types of beans that are so pretty and delicious. But I have to say my favorite bean is garbanzo beans, which are also called chickpeas. They're so great, they have this earthy taste and they're really versatile. You can use it in so many different things. For example, my favorite bean dish is a simple chickpea curry with brown rice. So that is just really delicious with, with uh, chickpeas or garbanzo beans. But I also love so many other dishes. For example, this is Mississippi caviar. It's this beautiful bean dip. It has black eyed peas and black beans with tomatoes and bell peppers and some nice spices. And then I just love to put canned beans on a really hearty salad, whatever bean I might have on hand. Of course, hummus. Who can live without hummus? A chickpea hummus, this one has sun-dried tomatoes in it. And then even the refried beans are so delicious as a dip or with tacos or tortillas. My favorite bean is a dark red kidney bean. How can it be anything different? I grew up on dark red kidney beans. That was it. That's the main crop that we've grown over all these years. I like home-style baked beans. And uh, my mom makes a great kidney bean salad. I'm just going to coin it. Tennessee chili, crowder peas and pintos with a blended ratio of about half and half. Add some sausage and some bacon to it, then add your cornbread. It is fantastic and delicious. I love garbanzos because they are so easy. You can throw them on a salad, you can pop them in the oven and you've got a, a snack, a toasted snack. They can be used in a lot of ways, Mediterranean, just a lot of different recipes. But I'm gonna have to go back to the very first recipe that I created for Bush, and that was a bean spice cake. And that actually uses our baked beans. I actually used honey sweet beans this morning, but you could put our original or our vegetarian beans in it. And it's, it's like a hummingbird cake, so it has walnuts and pineapples in it and drizzle it with a little, little glaze and it's fabulous. So that's my favorite. I'm gonna stay true to my first recipe I created. <laughs> Bush has a soul and, and I think by having a soul, there's a certain immortality to that. Um, 
Because, you know, when I have employees come to me as they retire uh, with tears in their eyes, thanking me uh, for the opportunity to be able to send their kids to school, uh, first generation kids going to college. Uh, when I have someone come to my office and tell me that they take our, our bonus check and become Santa Claus and they're able to provide uh, gifts for underprivileged kids, you know, and I see, um, you know, other events that happen in people's lives and I see the community rally, again, rally around them and support them uh, and get them through the tough times. It really speaks to who we are as a company and I think it really speaks to a company with soul a uh, beautiful peen company that, that I believe has an immortality and that, that should live in perpetuity. This is truly one beautiful bean. Not only does it taste great, but it's good for you, good for the environment, good for the world. I'm John McCalmont. That wraps it up for this edition of Built in America, Sustainable Nation. You know, I got to thank the people at Bush's Beans for the hospitality. If you want to find out more about them, all you have to do is go to builtinamerica.tv and we'll see you on the next episode. Me, I'm going to enjoy this incredible view and try to figure out how to get down from here. <laughs> we'll see you on the next Built in America TV.